Welcome to Candy Shop Yarns again, where everything is sugar-free and high in fiber. I am Deborah, your confectioner extraordinaire, and this is my creative vlog. This is where I get to share all of my creative pursuits with you. And I definitely have an emphasis on fiber-related projects. So, um, I own Candy Shop Yarns, and that's where I sell hand-dyed yarns um, and other items, but primarily yarns uh, based on childhood favorites, childhood favorite sweets, um, experiences, movies, things like that, but mostly sweets. I am at candyshopyarns.com and I am also on Instagram at candyshopyarns and I'm also there as My Fairy Tale Chronicles. So, with all of that said, let's get started, shall we? I am really excited to share some of these projects with you that I have been working on. Some are finished, some are still in progress. But let's share my first finished project with you. I didn't think I'd get this one done, but I did. Oh, it is really noisy today. We are having quite the storm which I'm not going to complain about because we need it. But the project that I'm talking about is Cobwebs. It is by Julia Hart. I purchased this on Etsy, but I first saw it on Noble Character Crafts where Amy showed her version of this. Now, as you see, there are four spiders in the center in a line and Amy mentioned how she wanted this to be larger for her table and I also did. So I drew out my own sketch of what I wanted. I added a spider here and I was adding a spider here. So here is my project. Now it's really hard to show. <laughs> so I have it on a board here. Dun, da, da, da. Um, one thing, if you notice on my little sketch here, there was going to be one more row of these spiders in between. But, and, and last week, I, or yeah, last week, I was determined to do that row. But I don't know if you're like me, where you're going and you're working on a project and it's really fun and you're enjoying yourself and then all of a sudden you are just like, I am so done with this. <laughs> That's how I was with this project. I start, I decided I'm going to do all of the little spiders that need to be done because that is the most finicky part. I'm just going to get them out of the way so that the rest is smooth sailing. And I was right here and I made two more and I was realizing I was gonna need three more. I thought, nope, not gonna do it. <laughs> not gonna do it. So this is what I have. They're all little spider webs and some have the spiders in the middle. It's really fun. So, in adapting this pattern, because I made mine wider, did I make it longer? One, two, three, four. So I didn't end up making it longer. It was going to be longer, but I did make it wider than the original pattern. It meant that I had to kind of just figure out a little bit with how to connect the points on this. And in the pattern, it numbers each block and it tells you the the directions to follow for each numbered block, and a lot of them repeat. It's really noisy. <laughs> uh, so, I, I after doing the first few, I was like, oh, I got this, I've got it figured out, and I really had no problem making the rest um, and making any, uh, mm, adaptations to it because you can see here this one joins at four points this one joins at three points this one joins at three different points this has a little what would that be a fleur-de-lis on the end whereas 
This has a little tiny Pico. Um, so they're all just a little bit different. Ooh, you had two and you drape it across, that's fun. No. <laughs> um, but I, as I was following the pattern, on the very last block, I realized I was joining these incorrectly. They're still joined. It looks fine. It's just it, the pattern has a little bit neater join than what I did, but it's fine. It's fine. So I finished it in time for Halloween. Not that I really have anywhere right now to put it because I've already done my decorating. So it'll get stored for next year. Uh, but it was a fun project. I've just been in a crocheting mood lately and I normally am not, so I enjoyed that. The thread that I used, I purchased at Hobby Lobby. No, I didn't. I purchased it at Michael's and it is Aunt Lydia's Classic 10 in the natural and black jet yeah just black colors and I used a 1.75 millimeter crochet hook and that was all that's all the details I have for this I ironed it to kind of shape it and then I pinned it out on a on my ironing board with a towel underneath it and I spray starched it and let it dry I was going to do a liquid starch, like soak it in there, pin all the points out, and I just I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I don't really even think it matters that much. It's going to lay on a table. It's shaped nicely, so I think it's just fine. And I'm happy to have finished it because at one point I thought, forget this, I am done. <laughs> All right, next, let's see. Do I have any other Halloween, yes, or fall related projects in the bag that I showed last time by Eggs and Crackers Makes on Etsy. I have my socks that I'm making for my daughter. I finished them. These are DK weight socks, just plain vanilla socks, no pattern, just, you know, I, I cast on 48 stitches on a 2.75 millimeter needle and went from there the length that I want but the yarn is my frosty pumpkin cider colorway and I have 20 grams left so she wears a US size seven and a half women's shoe and so I wear a size nine and I also have, you know, kind of a little bit more narrow feet, but I would have had enough to make a size nine for myself. So that's good to know if I wanted to make any more in the future, which I kind of do. I want to make more DK weight socks. This is only my second pair and the first pair were looser and this, this was a good a good fit for me. Um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything that I did special with these, but I, I didn't just a classic vanilla sock, so they were pretty, pretty fast. I think I did the second foot from here to the toe last night in like an hour or so. I mean, like super fast. I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, this is going to take me some time, but Next thing you know, I was done and I'm not complaining. So I'm going to pack away this bag until next year and pull out the next holiday bag. So I really, I really love having fun bags. I have a drawer full of bags and I've kind of been in the mood to go through them and do a declutter. None of them are clutter. I love them all, but I kind of have been in the mood for some new bags. I'm going to um, send you over to Past Deborah because Past Deborah recorded a little segment of another finished project and then we'll come back to me.
Hello. So I'm excited because tonight is something really fun. I've been looking forward to all year long. It is my knitting group's secret exchange. Let me tell you a little bit about it. First of all, five or six years ago, maybe I started a knitting group and it has been evolving over the years, but the last year or so we've kind of settled into a really nice, lovely groove and we have 10 members and we have so much fun together. We do a lot of fun things. One of the things that we do is early in the year, um, we, those who want to participate, they bring a skein of yarn and um, fill out a paper about themselves and put that into a bag and it gets all closed up and it's all secret like you don't know whose bag is whose and and we swap those around and then you open up the bag that you get and you look inside and you see the yarn that you have and the person that you're knitting or crocheting for you're going to make something for the person listed on the paper inside the bag with the yarn provided so it's really fun. It's really fun. So I finished this project. I actually finished it a little while ago, um, but I can't really talk about it until after we give it to them. So I'm recording today to put in, to put in the future episode. Okay. So I opened up the, the bag and I saw beautiful yarn and immediately I thought this looks really familiar went out to my yarn stash. This is where I keep my yarn. And lo and behold, I had two skeins myself. This is the yarn. Kalua Bay by Nehezda's Crayon Box it is a superwash eight ply fingering weight yarn. Um, it's superwash merino and nylon. This is the yarn. And so I thought, I have three skeins of yarn I could work with. What could I make? I thought, I'm going to make a sweater. The person that I'm making for is tiny. I knew that three skeins would be enough if I did like a short sleeve kind of thing. And I looked all over. I found a pattern. I started and I just thought, a sweater is one. If it doesn't fit just right, you're not going to wear it. And I wanted this to be wearable. So... Instead, I decided to make this cowl, an accessory anybody can wear, you know, that's, that's great. This is the Calliope cowl. And it is by Karina Spencer. Oh, it says Calliope cowlette. Um, so let me show you the cowl. It is really fun. Now, the yarn, the way that it is dyed, it is random, but it does have big um, blotches of color concentrated in different areas on the skein. So I knew that it would pool possibly or flash. And this cowl actually calls for DK weight yarn. So what I did is I used one of the skeins that I have and I held it double with the skein provided. And that helped the color to blend a lot more. You can see how, let's see, right here. You can see right there where two strands are held together. And what it is, let me show you the shape of it from the side. Essentially, it's a mini shawl that's connected in the back, like a mini triangle shawl that's been connected in the back. So you kind of get the look of a shawl with the wearability of a cowl. And I love cowls so much. I think that's just super cute, really fun. Um, I did adapt the, the edging. I didn't really love the, the edging it showed. I mean, it's cute, but it wasn't what I wanted for this. 
So you can see that it has kind of this eyelet detail and knitting it was also very, very fussy, which it's okay if it's fussy, but if it didn't look exactly how I wanted, here's a picture of kind of how it starts. Um, if it didn't end up looking exactly how I wanted, then I didn't want to deal with the fussiness. So I did a knitted eye cord bind off. And I think it looks nice. Now, what I wanted for this is because of the name of the yarn and the color, to me, it looked like water. And I wanted it to look like waves on the water. And I think that it definitely does. You can see the waves on the border there, which is why I didn't want to do the, the lacy pico edge. I wanted it to look more like a wave. So I'm going to wrap this up now and head to my knitting group where somebody has made something for me. I don't even remember what yarn I put in there, so it's going to be a complete surprise. <laughs> so that'll be really fun. So now I have to decide how I want to wrap this because that's also half of the fun, but I'm really excited to be able to give this to my friend. and to have her be able to enjoy it because it is starting to cool down here finally in Utah and we are supposed to have a 20 degree shift in temperature like uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit cooler in the next week so it's going to finally be sweater weather and I am so excited. <laughs> That's really fun. I had so much fun at that event. We have a great time at our knit night, and I showed you what I made for one of the ladies there, but you're probably wondering, what did somebody make for me? And I cannot wait to show you because it is awesome. First, I'm gonna show you the yarn that I put in my bag. It is from PK Yarn, and it was called Benny and the Jets. And this is what's left of it. I remembered that I put something super bright and neon in there, but I couldn't remember which one. And it is just super bright. I love it. Okay, this is what my friend Wendy, she is um, Granny Pan Knits, one half of the Granny Pan Knits podcast on YouTube. She made a bag for me that she wove with this yarn. How awesome is that? Oh, I love it, love it. And I was exclaiming how much I loved these other bright pops of colors and how they perfectly matched. And she said, well, I hope so because you dyed them when I bought them from you <laughs> at the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair earlier this year. So, like, wow, what a happy coincidence. <laughs> you could tell I like bright colors. <laughs> so she learned to weave this year. She bought a loom from my sister. Well, it was my sister's son. And um, she says, so this was a really great excuse for me to learn how to weave so she could make me this bag. So here is a little scrap of what was left and she included that in there so I could see it if I wanted to make anything with it, use it as a bookmark, whatever. She has it um, backed with some feasible interfacing, but I, I just am over the moon thrilled with it. And inside are pineapples, like pineapple fabric. I gotta pull something else out first, just a minute. How bright and fun. So it's pockets all around it. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's fabulous. I've already put something inside. So I will tell you about that a little bit later. Okay, next project. What? I have so many projects here that I've been working on. Okay, in my haunted mansion bag 
is a sweater that I have been working on. This is the Putney sweater by Amy Loudon. So I had just joined the front and the back under the arms when I showed it to you last time. And I've since knit five and a half inches. I feel pretty good about that. I have been alternating skeins. Um, and I think that that's good because it looks like a nice blend. Let's look at the back. Now I need to knit another three and a half, three and a half inches before I start the ribbing. I think, I think that's what it is. Um, it goes pretty quick. I was trying really hard to focus on my tension because one of my friends in our knitting group, she has like pristine tension. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. And so after seeing what she made for someone in our group, I thought I want to get better at my tension and making sure that it's just really nice and neat and tidy. Well, I don't know that I did so great. <laughs> you can't even see it bunched up on here anyways. It's all right. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. Mostly what it is, so I'm just focusing on making sure that I hold my hand, the yarn, the needles the same way each time. Um, I have a hard time with this much weight Normally, when I'm knitting, I insert my hook, I rotate the needle a little bit, I rotate the needle and wrap the yarn. And it's usually not a huge motion, um, all in kind of one swoop like that. But with this much weight, and I find that that's really puts a lot of strain on my arms and my hands and my neck. and so or my shoulders. So instead, I have been inserting, wrapping, and pulling through, insert, wrap, pull through. That That's kind of hard to show you here like this. It, it, that was a bit awkward. But doing that, I'm trying to trying to do it as evenly as I can, um, even though I'm doing it slightly different than I normally would. But I have decided on the sleeves because I was mentioning last time I didn't know which type of sleeve I wanted to do, and I was leaning towards this one. I like shorter sweaters because I'm always I've always got my hands in water, washing things, whatever. I just don't want to be pushing them up constantly or having to fold them up, roll them up. So I wanted something that was a little bit shorter, but I didn't know if I really wanted it to be puffy. So I actually was talking to the designer about just ending this one shorter. And she did mention that this one was a, a slightly more tapered sleeve. Um, than another pattern that she had that I was looking at. So I think I'm just going to end this one early and add the cuff. So I'm sure I will have plenty of yarn because that was a concern and I got another skein from her just to make sure. So I should be just fine with that. I will keep my project in the Haunted Mansion until it's done because I think it's just super fun. Uh, okay. Now the other project that I have, this one is a sewing project and this one is a quilt. And I don't know if any of you are cross stitchers, but if you cross stitch, 
there's two types of finishes. There's you finished the cross stitch itself, and then there's fully finishing the project, meaning you framed it or you've finished it out in whatever type of display you're going to display it, however, however you're going to display it. So um, with a quilt, I'm like, I finished the quilt top, but the quilt is not fully finished, but I still count this as a finish. <laughs> So here is the quilt top that I have finished. So this is called, uh, well, there's, I've seen a lot of names to it, but how I came across it was the Prairie Braid quilt. And this one is great for scraps. I didn't necessarily make it with scraps. I went and bought a whole bunch of yarns and added in a few scraps, but not yarns. We're talking about sewing right now, fabric, fabric. Um, this is just, it's folded in half here. So folded in half, yeah. I have a video of this hanging up on an arbor where you can see the full thing um, kind of blowing in a breeze. I love how it looks. From a distance up close I'm kind of like oh that's a bit much it's a bit crazy but when you take a step back and look at it from a distance I really like it so I think it's great so this is made where you start with a square on the top and it is on point and then you add a strip of fabric budding up to the end of it and you sew that on and then you add the next strip this way and then you add the next strip this way and you just keep continuing down. It's kind of like adding in a new strand of hair, braiding, adding in a new strand of hair each time. So the size that I cut these strips, I cut, I gotta add the seam allowance, two and a half inches and I think I did it by seven inches pretty sure I did seven, two and a half by seven. Um, and you end up with a whole bunch of jaggedy edges and jaggedy on the top and then you square it all off and sew the rows together. I was going to make this a queen size quilt um, for someone specific and then that changed and I decided I don't wanna make a queen size quilt. <laughs> So I just sewed until like my um, crochet spider web. I sewed until I was like, I am so done. I don't wanna add another strip to this. If I look at it any longer, my eyes will probably bleed. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I was feeling. <laughs> so because I had had all of the strips cut out for months, on my cutting table and they were just taking over this room because I had them all cut out in in piles and every time I needed to work on it I had to move them all and like anyways if I wanted to do anything else I had to shift everything around and I just was like I just want to be done so then I went to go find backing for this and I thought I'm gonna this is crazy on the front I'm gonna make it crazy on the back and I looked all over and I couldn't find anything that I really liked that was crazy. But what I did find was this little um, tiny print of hedgehogs and little leaves and dots. And I think that it looks cute. It will be a nice background. So the next question is, how am I going to quilt it? Am I going to quilt it on my machine? Am I going to put it up and hand quilt it or am I going to send it to be quilted? That is a question that I still don't have the answer to. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I do want to use this for Christmas, for a Christmas gift. So I gotta, I gotta get rolling on whatever it is that I'm gonna do with it. So it's time for me to sew the backing together because I have fabric but I need to sew two pieces together to make it the right size and then do whatever I'm going to do for quilting it. Um, I have a lot of quilts started, like quilt tops started. Some of them are ready to be quilted. 
but they need to be hand quilted. Some are not finished on the top, but I would like to just finish some things there or let them go. One or the other, finish or let go. It, I've just had them sitting for a long time, so it was hard to start a new top when I have others already needing to be worked on. Is that all of the finished projects and all of the ones I'm working on? I have some other socks I, I finished, but I showed you last week. I mean, all I had to do was finish the cuff and I have other socks I haven't worked on. So now I'm going to show you what I've put in here. I have a big bin of scraps, um, specifically fingering weight yarn scraps. And I have been on a mission for years to work through those. But you know what happens? You're constantly adding new ones to it. So while I'm making a lot of scrappy things, the pile seems to still be growing. So I went through and I divided them all up and I have my teensiest tiniest ones that are like three grams or less and then I have the next size that are five grams or less and then I have the next size that are 10 to 15 grams and then I have others that are 20-ish grams that are not in containers, not in bags right now. And I've divided those up kind of by color families or, or things that I think would look nice together. And then I put, I gathered a whole bunch of other scraps and I stuck them in a baggie here. This was a bag that some sort of product came in and there was a sticker on the front that I couldn't get off so I stuck one of my labels on it because <laughs> I needed something to put my scraps in. So I'm going to show you what I have. I've got a lot of fun ones. I sh this was from last week from the Men Who Love Dragons Too Much. This is my Barbie and the Rockers. Um, this one is cinnamon, cinnamon stick. I don't know if I'll remember every single one of these. This one is peaches and cream. This was, I have actually several of these were scraps from um, a mini skein set from Dandelion and Dogwood. Um, this one is not grapefruit. It's summer splash, no, no, no. My brain went blank all of a sudden. I forgot it. Um, then I have some other like minty greens, just berry yarn, lots of fun colors. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to hold all these to show you all at once. There is just no, wait, wait, let's see. Let's see if there's a way. Oh, you can't really see them all. Oh, I, you know what I see? Oh, wait, my yarn from the bag, that could go in. <laughs> you, can't, you can't even see. Okay. <laughs> All of those I put together in here because I want to make a scrappy cowl. Um, my sister Emily of Salt City Knits, she made a scrappy cowl this last year and she wrote up the pattern and I don't know where it is. I've got to find it. I don't know. Emily, where is it? You told me once. I gotta find it because that's what I'm gonna make with these yarns. And I put them in this bag because the colors are just fun together and it's a good size. So I'm going to cast that on. But I also am going on a trip this weekend with my family in this next week. And you know what is one of the most important parts about packing for a trip is packing your knitting. And I don't know what project I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna take this because I need it to be 
a smaller bag. I have some small bags that I take with me that I can just hang on my wrist that I can knit while I'm walking and going and doing things. Um, so I have one that's like more like this size and it's super squishy so I can shove it in my bag anytime I need. So I usually do socks, but I have been making a lot of socks and I'm thinking I might want to do a hat. I really want to work on scrappy things, but I have so, I have a lot of scraps and I'm running out of patience. <laughs> but aren't these so cute? So cute. So I've, I've just kind of got some set, like set together of things that I'm going to work on next. Um, but I think that this is a really cute, like monster sock kit. I think there's about 60 grams in here. This one has easily a hundred grams. Um, but I just think that that is so fun. Um, so I'm actually going to be doing a giveaway today. I actually have multiple giveaways. So along the lines of what I was just talking about, I am going to do a monster sock giveaway with the tiny scraps. And I'm going to do a monster sock giveaway with the next size tiny scraps. And I went and got cute little bags to put them in because I mean, you gotta have them in something cute. That's equally as important. So that's gonna be one giveaway. That's gonna be one. And then here's a super fun one. Um, I was featured in Nomadic Knits magazine, issue 12, which was Utah and Idaho. And in there, um, the yarn featured from my shop, I've talked about this previously, was right here. This is my yarn. That sock set for making these socks and that hat is this set right here. This is my old fashioned whorehound sock set. And this is Old Fashioned Whorehound. This one is Cream Soda, and this one is Mermaid Lemonade. So this sock set right here is going to be the third giveaway. So if you, like me, love colorful things and love scrappy projects, then you'll like that. If you like to knit, with sock sets, then this will be for you. So you're going to have to stay tuned to see how to enter to the very end, because it is time for us to move along to the ending segment where I talk about different sweets and treats. So it is Halloween this weekend, and I made a little cute trick-or-treating Halloween bag. I don't go trick-or-treating, but I still love candy. <laughs> And in here, I have the top three rated worst Halloween candies in the US. You ready to see what's in here? Why would I put the worst, not the best? Well, we can discuss whether or not you think they are the worst. So the number one, circus peanuts. How many of you love circus peanuts? I can't stand them. They're banana flavored. It's so weird. You don't expect it to be banana flavored. And the texture you would think would be really light and airy, but they're actually dense and airy, but heavy and light at the same time. It's the strangest thing. So why is it that these are still around if they are rated the number one worst Halloween candy? I think it's because of nostalgia and because they're so darn cute. So darn cute in here. First of all, these are old. <laughs> I buy things for props and uh, they might look great, but they won't taste great. I'll have uh, my family ask me all the time, my kids, oh mom, can I eat some of those candies? Cause I have bins of candies. I'm like, you don't want those. <laughs> okay. Number two was also number, I think, four, seven, nine, and 10, something like that. They are all related to the same thing. So I'm just gonna put it all into one and that would be black licorice. It was Neko, 
was number two, the Necco wafers. And then the next one was Good and Plenty, which is licorice flavored. And black licorice was on there. There were so many black licorice flavored things on that list. Why is it still around? I hate these so much. <laughs> I do not like black licorice. I don't like anise seed. I don't like any of that. I don't like fennel. So it's one of those divisive things. You love it or you hate it. I don't think I've ever heard anybody that's like, eh, I could take it or leave it. It's like you, you love it or hate it. So I'd love to hear if you love it or hate it. Okay, and then the next one is one I actually like. And I just went and bought some so I could eat it. And it is candy corn. I bought the mix because I like the pumpkins. So some people know them as mellow cream. And I don't like the chocolate flavored ones, but I like the regular ones, but you can only eat just a couple at a time. They are so sweet. But this was number three, but I actually like, I actually like it. So I'm gonna open this bag up for Halloween and we'll be eating those I'm not supposed to be eating them, so I will have a couple. I've had to limit my sweets intake. And because we've got a whole bunch of nasty, hard, disgusting flavored candies here, I had to make sure that I did have one that I liked. <laughs> and look, I love this bag. This was a tea towel that was on clearance at the store that I just I had this fabric and I had just the right amount and it already had some trim on the bottom and I just sewed that up quickly so that I could have the cute little bag. There's my label. Um, my friend Margaret, she's the one that introduced me to using kitchen towels to make project bags. You can find the cutest things to do that with. So to enter the giveaway, what I want you to put in the comment box uh, below is I want you to enter your least favorite candy of all time and then I would like you to tell me which of these you're interested in the mini monster or the the yeah mini monster set the monster sock set so we're gonna call it the mini monster sock set the monster sock set or the old-fashioned whorehound sock set so I need to know which of those you are entering for since we have three to give away so tell me what candy you dislike the most and which of these three you are interested in. If you're interested in any of them, then you can just put that. You can put, I like them, I like all the um, sock sets. Don't use the word giveaway, please. So that's really important. Don't use the word giveaway because it ends up bringing in a whole bunch of people that have no interest in this channel and they take away chances from you. So thank you so much for joining me today. It is going to be a couple of weeks before I record again because I'm going to be on a trip with my family. And so um, my shop will still be open, but I will only be shipping um, when I return. So if you order after this Saturday, this sat if you order the day before, two days before Halloween, yes, I'll still be shipping it. But after Halloween into the middle of next week, um, you'll have to wait until I get back. So it's good to see you again, and I look forward to catching up with you later. Bye.